in the next 10 years, a third of the people in sub-Saharan Africa will be suffering from chronic hunger. There's an unrealism about the seriousness of the world food problem that I find rather scary. Everything should be done to uproot poverty and break the cycle of poverty in Africa. If nothing is done, food shortages are an impending catastrophe in Africa south of the Sahara. Yet its agriculture has immense untapped potential. The potential is there, but the potential you can't eat potential. No. You've got to have reality, yes. grain and food to eat, to relieve human misery. We are heading towards disaster. And so there has to be a break. There has to be a break for the better. Ethiopia, 1995. A procession to inaugurate a workshop organized by the Sasakawa Global 2000 program to address the causes of food shortages in sub-Saharan Africa and to develop the huge potential of agriculture in the region. Yohei Sasakawa president of the Nippon Foundation, which provides the funds for the program. President Jimmy Carter, founder of Global 2000, has provided political leadership and negotiating expertise. And Dr. Norman Borlaug, Nobel Peace Prize winning scientist and father of the Green Revolution in Asia. The commitment of the Global 2000 program is to help solve major health and food problems, particularly in Africa. They have virtually eliminated the scourge of guinea worm and are now tackling river blindness. Ten years ago, they formed a partnership with the Sasakawa Africa Association, called Sasakawa Global 2000, to help transform subsistence agriculture in Africa. Now 40,000 families in Ethiopia are following your example. Soon there'll be 400,000. The program has an impressive track record. I think programs like the Sakawa Global 2000 extension package in Ethiopia can result in a drastic change for the better in the food security situation. Uh, but the clock is ticking, and unless we act now, and act vigorously, uh, these dire predictions are bound to come true. The starting point was the dreadful famine in Ethiopia in 1984. The late Ryoichi Sasakawa was so deeply disturbed by the television pictures that he gave a substantial donation as food aid. But he wanted to do much more, as his son, Yohei Sasakawa, explains. その後我々はやっぱり、アフリカの人たちが食料が自給自足できる、そういう体制を整える必要があるんではないかと。魚を差し上げるよりも魚の釣り方を教えてあげるべきだというのが私の父 this is starvation yield, and that's what we've got too much of in the world. Well, Dr. Norman Borlaug won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1970 for bringing a higher yielding agriculture to subsistence farmers in India and Pakistan after the famines of the 60s. It came to be known as the Green Revolution. It was to Norman Borlaug that Ryoichi Sasakawa turned. And I simply said, well, I don't know anything about Central African agriculture, and I'm too old to start learning now. Next morning, I got another call. 
from his office and he said, Mr. Ryoichi Sasakawa wants you to know that he's 15 years older than you are. We should have started yesterday, so start tomorrow. Sasakawa Ryoichi wa 100 no gilon yori mo 1 tsu no jikkou ga kanjin da. Yukoto wo kare ga yutte kono project ga starto shita wake desu. It was to be the genesis of an important new organization dedicated to getting results. Ten years later, Sasakawa Global 2000's workshop in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. A dynamic exchange of ideas focused on solving the immense problems of agricultural development. It brought together an extraordinary range of political leaders and agricultural experts, people of enormous knowledge and influence. From the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, world experts on soil fertility, ministers of agriculture, distinguished agricultural scientists, representatives from the World Bank, and from major aid organizations. One of the key objectives of SG2000 is to assist national institutions to transfer improved technology to subsistence farmers. One example shows both the problems and the potential in sub-Saharan Africa. The Babati district in the Arusha region of Tanzania Farming here shows perplexing differences between neighboring farms. On one side of the hill, the Cody family harvests their crop of red sorghum. It is just such families using traditional, low-yielding methods that SG2000 aims to reach. Without an improved agriculture, their family is condemned to a life without food security, dependent on unreliable rain-fed cultivation and worsening soil fertility. Without making some investments in the farm, it's difficult to imagine how they can break out of this vicious cycle of poverty because you begin to reverse that process when you get additional income. On the other side of the hill live Barnabas and Lavina Bura. Twenty years ago, when they first came here, they lived with the same food insecurity as the Cody family. The critical change for them came four years ago, when they started to adopt more intensive cultivation. When local extension workers offered the Buras the opportunity to try the new methods on a test plot on their own land, they took it up enthusiastically. The basic package of recommended technologies includes improved seed varieties and soil fertility, coupled with better crop management. These factors alone can increase yields of maize by three or four-fold. The tripling of their yields has generated a period of unprecedented prosperity for them. They can now store maize for the future, so they don't have to sell their grain immediately after harvest when prices are low. They have invested in oxen to plow their fields, as well as renting them to neighboring farms, another source of income. They can also afford for their children to go to school, giving them much wider options for future employment. More income means more and better food, with all the resulting health benefits. A model for neighboring farmers to learn from. I get an inspiration when I come to this farm because I see someone who is applying all the knowledge that he has at his disposal. 
In the long term, we see farmers such as Baden Masbura as the future of African agriculture because they represent a transition from small scale to emergent commercial scale farmers who are going to underpin the level of production at a level which will meet the food demands of the future. The Bura family is a powerful model of what SG2000 would like to see all over sub-Saharan Africa. In the last 10 years, 300,000 farmers have benefited directly in this way, and several times that number indirectly. SG2000 is extending its activities in Africa south of the Sahara. From its inception in Ghana in 1986, SG2000 has reached out to 14 different countries to help transform their agricultures. The projects in agriculture with which the Sasakawa Global 2000 has been associated have been the most successful of all such projects undertaken in Africa with the initiative of non-governmental organizations. The Sasakawa Global 2000 has followed the very welcome principle of working within government institutions. Every cent that comes through the program is used directly for the purpose of improving the life of the small farmer. A farmer's enough food. What is remarkable about SG2000 is how much influence such a small organization has had. One reason is that they chose their frontline staff with great care. They wanted people with exceptional skills. They are true leaders in the ability that they, they have broad perspective across all the disciplines of science that bear on agricultural production, but they have more. Uh, they have a certain charisma uh, that can link them to the research people, to the extension people, and to the peasant farmer. And they aren't afraid to move. These people have courage. There's too many people in the world that have tremendous talent, but status quo is pretty comfortable. And these people aren't built that way. Once they see an opportunity to open the door and to push ahead, they do it. And I know the tough fiber that they're made out of. SG2000's primary strategy is to work through national extension services to mobilize thousands of extension workers from each country and to keep expatriate staff to an absolute minimum. This is a critical factor in ensuring the long-term sustainability of the program. One thing I like about this project is that it is a people's project, meaning it encourages people's participation. Secondly, it becomes part of the extension system of a country. Therefore, it does not upset what is already existing. Lastly, it involves a number of women amongst the beneficiaries. I'm very happy with that. Sasakawa Global 2000 is committed to working with other like-minded organizations to bring about all the complex changes which need to happen to develop agriculture. They're tackling the urgent problem of reducing soil erosion and improving fertility. They're looking at alternatives to imported fertilizer. For example, working with the International Fertilizer Development Center to utilize indigenous phosphate sources. And introducing green manures, such as this makuna in Benin. Improved seed is critical. In Ghana, SG2000 are working with the Seed Inspection Unit to help ensure that local producers like Gloria Dewar can produce the best seed to the highest standards. They're actively promoting input stockists so that farmers can have ready access to inputs and working with local extension agents to significantly upgrade post-harvest technologies, a seriously underdeveloped area. They're developing education for mid-career extension workers, as in this pioneering BSc course designed with Winrock International and the staff of the University of Cape Coast, Ghana. To put this complex set of pieces together means critical changes in policy. 
One key area is science and technology. Former director of agriculture for the World Bank, economist Dr. Edward Shu. The investments we make in science, in those two fields, science and technology, are really the driving force of our economy today. I mean, if you look at increases in output across the economy in developed countries like US and Europe, et cetera, almost all of those increases in output are attributed to our investment, to past investments in science and technology. That is true in agriculture in spades. Crucially also, they work to influence policy makers at all levels. Frederick Sumaya is Prime Minister of Tanzania. To improve the quality in the rural areas, we must improve the farmers and the farming uh, conditions so that you have more production. But otherwise, if we don't tackle this problem, we are lost. What we have had the privilege of seeing and in a small, modest way participating with in your extension service on the basic food crops the last eight years indicates that you can double, triple, and quadruple nice. the yield. And we have seen similar thing, things in six other sub-Saharan countries. So the potential is there, but the potential, you can't eat potential. No. You've got to have reality, yes. grain and food to eat to relieve human misery. Otherwise, we will have worse and worse chaos. Change in African agriculture is urgent, and a central theme of SG2000's approach is to unshackle the immense collective talents and energy of subsistence farmers. Grassroots action is fundamental to the positive changes which are happening in Africa today. The village of Bowime in Benin. The Ministry of Rural Development and Sasakawa Global 2000 have stimulated a dynamic process of change here, the sort of development which needs to happen all over Africa. The critical change has been for the farmers to pool their resources in a collective savings and loans association. If this were a normal bank, this farmer probably wouldn't even have got through the door. Getting credit from local banks is virtually impossible for small-scale farmers a serious problem for agricultural development in Africa. So this village took things into their own hands and set up what they called a crepe, which in French stands for Caisse Rurale d'Epargne et des Prêts, meaning Savings and Loans Association. Dr. Marcel Galiba, SG2000 country director for Benin and Togo, and his colleagues from the ministry visit the annual general meeting of the CREP. The team has been a catalyst in setting up this extraordinarily dynamic organization, which has had powerful leadership from their president. One of the pillar of our activities is collective action. And small-scale farmers, taken alone, they can be weak, but as a group, they become a real driving force. After only four years, Boime's crep has saved more than $100,000. And the beauty of it, you know, they've been giving loan for two years now, and the recovery rate is 100%. One area where the crepe is paying new dividends is in food processing. Here, the root vegetable, cassava, is being processed into gari, cassava flour. Traditional methods like this use an enormous amount of labor. 
improved processing technology bought by a group of women in the village with a loan from the CREP has dramatically reduced their labor. SG2000 is helping to introduce this machinery developed by the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture in Nigeria. In this village, we really have a catalytic role. We come with very small things and they amplify it. It's like bringing some seed money and they do the rest. My wife and I were in Benin not long ago and we saw a whole community come together. A totally different, vibrant community of hope, of confidence, of self-respect, of achievement. And their dreams of the future, I feel certain, will be realized. At the policy level, Sasakawa Global 2000 is taking the message to the world that agricultural development is urgent and will bring huge rewards. The role that the Sasakawa Global 2000 has started to play in Ethiopia is deeply appreciated. We see African nations achieving their own green revolutions. I am both happy and proud that we can contribute to the achievement of this most noble goal. I'm now convinced that these countries have the potential to double, often triple, the yield and production with the technology that's available now. I want to see this happen in my lifetime and also that it's uh, in memory of uh, Mr. Ryoichi Sasakawa's uh, dedication to make something happen to improve agriculture of Central African countries. Mm -hmm.